Hello students, in this video we'll discuss Rayleigh quotients. So if I'm given an n by n symmetric matrix A, that of course just means that A is equal to A transpose, and we're doing this over we're doing this over the real numbers. Over the real numbers. Just so we can avoid complex conjugates, right? The same thing works for complex, uh, for you know, Hermitian matrices with over the complex numbers. We'll do those in future videos, okay? The Rayleigh quotients for A is the quadratic form. x transpose ax over x transpose x for a vector x in Rn, right? That's the Rayleigh quotient over here. And so now what we want to show is the following. So notice that since A is symmetric, so we want to investigate properties of this quotient over here, right? Okay, and this is for any x that's non-zero, right? So I don't want x to be the zero vector, right? If x is a zero vector, this would be, that, would be degenerate, basically, right? Okay, so if x is not zero, we want to consider these quotients over here, right? We can call these things over here maybe like QA of x, like that, okay? So I input an x and I output a real number over here because this is a dot product over here with respect to the a structure, and over here that's just going to be the length of x, right? And so, of course, there's a couple things to notice about a. So notice, of course, we can restrict this thing. This is a homogeneous expression over here, and so I can restrict this to unit vectors if I want, right? So we can also consider consider for any xc in Rn of unit length, qa of xc, which is just going to be what? It's just going to be xc transpose a xc, like so. And of course, since xc, since what I can do now is I can replace all of these x's over here by x over x transpose. And so in other words, this Rayleigh quotient over here really looks like what? This Rayleigh quotient over here really looks like um, x over the length of x transpose a of x over the length of x. I can write the Rayleigh quotient like this for all x non zero. Of course, this is a unit vector over here, and this is a unit vector over here. So in other words, I can restrict this Rayleigh quotient over here to unit vectors without losing any information, because all I'm doing is I'm just rescaling it in this more general definition, right? So oftentimes, you restrict the Rayleigh quotient to just these unit vectors over here, okay? Now, since A is a symmetric matrix, I can orthogonally diagonalize it, right? So if we orthogonally diagonalize A, What does it mean to orthogonally diagonalize A? It means to find a basis of Rn consisting of eigenvectors of A, which form an orthonormal basis. So not just the basis, but form an orthonormal basis. Okay? In other words, that basis is really what? That basis is really phi 1, phi 2, phi n, and they're all unit vectors, so hat, that's an orthonormal set. Okay? Where a of phi i is lambda i phi i hat, like that. And where I've also ranged the eigenvalues in an increasing order, right? So here we're going to assume, as we can without loss of generality, that the eigenvalues have been arranged so that lambda 1 less than or equal to lambda 2 less than or equal to lambda n, because we know the eigenvalues of a symmetric matrix are all real over here. So this thing over here, this lambda 1 is really going to be like lambda minimum. This lambda n over here is going to be lambda maximum, okay? So in particular, notice that th since these things are unit vectors, what can I say about the Rayleigh quotient applied to, for example, any one of these things over here? So if I look at QA, so QA of the nth eigenvector over here, phi n hat, is going to be phi n hat transpose a 
then phi n hat, which is phi n hat transpose lambda n phi n, which is just lambda n phi n length squared, which is just lambda n. So in other words, this QA attains the value, this real value function QA attains lambda n. And then similarly, likewise, likewise, QA of phi 1 is going to be what? Well, by the same exact reason, I put a 1 here, a 1 here, a 1 here, a 1 here, and a 1 here. And that will be, of course, that's going to be 1 again. So I have a lambda 1. So this is going to be lambda 1 or lambda minimum, right? Okay, so this QA function, this really quotient, attains the minimum eigenvalue, it attains the maximum eigenvalue, and I claim that everything else is sort of sandwiched between those two values, the extreme value of the minimum eigenvalue, lambda 1, and the maximum value of lambda n, right? So now our claim is this, so we claim lambda 1 less than or equal to QA of any vector x over here, the vector x less than or equal to what? Less than or equal to lambda n. In other words, this Rayleigh quotient is a bounded function, and not only is it bounded, it attains its minimum value and it attains its maximum value of the minimum eigenvalue and the maximum eigenvalue, okay? So how do you prove this over here? Well, for any vector x, you can write it in its orthonormal basis, right? So we're going to write x. So write x, proof of the claim. I can write x as some numbers. In fact, we can compute these numbers. We'll compute these numbers exactly. I don't need lambda over here. I need some other choices of numbers over here. I'll say like a1 a1 phi 1 of hat plus a n phi n hat, right? And of course, since it's an orthonormal basis, the Pythagorean theorem tells me that the length of x squared is just going to be what? It's just going to be a1 squared all the way down to a n squared like so, okay? So let's look at the Rayleigh quotient of this thing over here. So in other words, the Rayleigh quotient of x divided by the length of x over here. So it will QA of x b. So QA of x is going to be the vector x, of course, divide by 1 over the length of x squared, right? 1 over the length of x squared, like that, because x transpose, dot, x transpose times x is just the length squared, right? Good. And then what? Then we're going to have this inner product over here. So if I apply, if I have, I have x itself, it's going to be, this is really x dot ax, right? So I'm going to write x dot what? Dot ax. But what is ax? It's going to be a1, a1. And then, of course, a of phi 1 is going to be lambda 1, lambda 1, phi 1. All the way down to, if I plug in a, I'm going to have a lambda a n, lambda n, phi n hat over here. Good. Okay, just because all, I wrote down it in basis of eigenvalues. Now, of course, if I dot x with this thing over here, I'm going to use the same orthogonality and write this as what? This is just going to be exactly just lambda 1, lambda 1 over here, a1 squared plus lambda n over here, a n squared over a1 squared all the way down to a n squared. And of course, we see over here, this thing is less than or equal to what? I can replace all of these lambdas. I can make all these lambdas larger by replacing this, all of them with lambda n. So this thing is less than or equal to lambda n. So this is clearly less than or equal to lambda n by replacing all the lambdas, all the eigenvalues with the largest eigenvalue. And I can replace all the lambdas over here in this expression over here, since they're monotonically increasing, by the smallest. And say the smallest this thing can be, if I make them all, if I make all the lambdas in the numerator equal to lambda 1, then this thing is bigger than or equal to lambda 1, because then all the a1 modulus a1 squared through modulus a plus da, 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 modulus a n squared will just cancel the denominator. And so we do and see, see that the Rayleigh quotient is bounded by the smallest eigenvalue and bounded above by the largest eigenvalue. And every other value of the Rayleigh quotient that it takes on for any non for any non-negative vector x over here, non, excuse me, any non-zero vector, excuse me, any non-zero vector x over here will give me a value between the smallest eigenvalue and the largest eigenvalue. Thank you very much.